welcome to Glendale, Arizona. And welcome to the NFC Championship game on Fox. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Arizona Cardinals. David Akers will kick it away for Philadelphia. And as Kurt Warner told us two days ago, we've got to keep the pile moving forward. They'll get a chance to do it as they get the opening kickoff. How can that happen? How can the football blow off the tee inside a dome? Akers is looking at that thing twice. Maybe the noise knocked it off. Akers put a little extra into that, and Arrington will take a knee. So Kurt Warner, two-time league MVP, one-time Super Bowl MVP, all with the St. Louis Rams, now leads his offense in the Arizona Cardinals, the team that moved to the desert from St. Louis in 1988 out to the field in this offensive line. Troy has played extremely well here in 08. Yeah, I think you could make a case that their, their best games have been here in the playoffs. They've done a good job of pass protection for the most part all season long. But the best thing has been opening up some holes for these running backs the last two weeks. Notably Edger and James who is back as the featured back for the Cardinals. And James gets it picks up two. Bunkley was in on the stop and how often Troy do we talk about linebackers and Brian Dawkins and cornerbacks. But when you consider the job that Bunkley and Patterson did last week at Giant Stadium against probably the league's best the interior offensive line of the Giants they were a major reason why the Eagles are here today. Yeah they've done a great job and they're going to be expected to do a good job again today of course their role will change a little bit they're going to be predominantly asked to put a little bit more pressure on Kurt Warner. That was Arrington in motion. Quick release and a completion to Anquan Bolden. Gain of seven. Bolden who missed last week after scoring on that electrifying 71 yard touchdown against Atlanta in the wild card playoff round. He strained his hamstring was inactive at Carolina and yet the offense didn't miss a beat. Didn't miss a beat. He says he feels good and you know with the hamstring you never really know and I think that as long as he works in small spaces and doesn't have to really open up I think he'll be in good shape but when, if he has to test it I think that's when we'll find out just how healthy he really is a blitz on third and one Warner over the middle hits Fitzgerald first down across the 45. One of the things the Cardinals have done very well here in the postseason play is get to third and manageable down in distances the Eagles bring the blitz the Cardinals are able to pick that up man to man coverage you see there you got Asante Samuel on Fitzgerald and he's trying to navigate the other receivers and defenders and that's what created the separation for Larry Fitzgerald a natural pick if you will a 19 yard completion on third and one from their own 48. Quick throw Bolden Urban was blocking and Bolden gets nine Clemens out there to make the stop for Philly Tell you, Todd Haley the offensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals doing a good job you get into a game like this and as we discussed even though Kurt Warner a veteran guy has been in a number of big games Super Bowl games NFC championships. But you still want to allow your quarterback to settle in. He's had some easy throws, some short throws, and he's he's starting to get a feel right now for getting the ball to the key guys. Second down and one. Edger and James keeps that pile moving forward for a first down. Ken Wisenhunt is the head coach here with the Cardinals in his second year. Six and ten the year before he got here. Eight and eight last year. Nine and seven in the. Cardinals have their first division title since 75 their first playoff appearance since 98 their only winning season when they beat Dallas and lost to the Vikings and when they hosted Atlanta two weeks ago their first home playoff game since 1947 when the franchise won it all 
as the Chicago Cardinals. That's Antrell Roll in motion, and here's a handoff to Edger and James. Sixteen yards. Well, the Cardinals will work Antrell Roll in from time to time. He went in motion, then they run the draw off of that to Edger and James back away from where the motion had gone. And right towards Trent Cole. Get him up the field. They know he's a pass rusher that likes to use his speed. And when he came up the field with the speed rush, that left a vacancy in which James was able to run through. Longest postseason carry by Edger and James, who gets it again. And picks up 11. Troy, the Cardinals did not have a rushing first down in that first Eagles game on Thanksgiving night in Philadelphia. They have three on this opening drive. Well, this is an entirely different offense to try to defense when they get the running game going like they have it going here on this first possession. Edger and James, who many people know, started the season as the starter. He was then benched for Tim Hightower, and during that time, he was a real professional, but he was also afforded a great deal of rest. And so now that he's in postseason play, he's got good legs, and we've seen it. Here's Tim Hightower, the rookie. Pretty good head of steam as he takes it down inside the 10, picked up four. You saw Jim Johnson as his defense has been, I'm sure, surprised with the way the Cardinals have come flying out of the gate. Jim Johnson here he is up in the booth with the, the bad back he was in the booth last week and Jim's a defensive coordinator who likes to call things from the sidelines because he gets a feel and he can see the players and the emotion of the game he says he has to call things much more systematically when he's up in the booth. Second and six Warner with time Fitzgerald won't go down. Touchdown. Did he get in? Certainly looked like it. It was the call on the field. And the Cardinals strike first. I tell you, pretty casual once he got the ball and was able to break a few tackles, not just making sure and getting the ball with some authority across the goal line. But as you said, it looked from from our vantage point that he was able to clear the goal line. Now the Eagles get a chance to try and answer a nine play 80 yard drive Warner four for four and he went to his two big weapons two to Bolden two to Fitzgerald. For Fitzgerald, he gets the first touchdown reception against the Eagles defense in the last five plus games. Demps will watch this ball go out of bounds, and that means that the Eagles will start with it at their own 40. A good note for Eagles fans team scoring first this postseason, two and six. Philadelphia starts at their own 40. Penalty flag on the play. The play continues. Donovan McNabb. Big run to start his day down inside the 40. 22 yards for a guy who, for a couple of years now, has kind of left the running game behind. We go back to the last time these two teams met. Donovan was able to make some plays with his legs in that game and and really ever since then he's still not the threat that he once was but he can Offside, he can still get out and motor 24 defense penalty is declined first down. You know the Cardinals do a good job up front in terms of getting pressure they got a good jump off the snap and Donovan's just able to find a crease and then he gets out behind those behind those linemen now it looked like it was going to be play action pass but yet the linemen were well down the field so it was apparently going to be a screen and Donovan just got with pressure had to take off and run with it a season long 22 yard run for McNabb now it's Westbrook to the 35. 
Let's go back to that Larry Fitzgerald touchdown. Yeah, interesting here. You've got Sheldon Brown who's on Larry Fitzgerald, and then he lets him go. He passes him off. The problem is the linebackers and everyone else is in man-to-man -man coverage. Now, the only thing I can guess is that Brian Dawkins is the safety when Larry Fitzgerald ran the crossing route then he was responsible for driving on that route as we saw but yet he didn't get there in time to make the play. Second and six. Fake the handoff and what a play made on the completion to Selleck by Adrian Wilson. A gain of only one third and five coming up you look at the backs and receivers in an offensive line that has allowed three sacks during the postseason all three coming in their win at the Vikings. And I think this offensive group is is just going to have to play better really than what they have the last two games because of their defensive dominance. You know, a lot of the struggles that the Eagles have had on the offensive side have been overlooked. McNabb has all day and finally hits Westbrook what a beautiful throw by Donovan McNabb and a good move out on the edge by Brian Westbrook first down and of course if they don't get the protection that they got up front then Donovan's not able to get this throw off great pocket and Donovan comes back and, and Westbrook just does a good job of recognizing that that Donovan has nowhere to go with the ball he runs a swing route and then he comes right back underneath and that's the problem Adrian Wilson was in good coverage. But once you allow then Westbrook to add lib you're gonna have a hard time keeping up with him. They toss to Westbrook. And a gain of only one Entrell roll is out there to make the stop now playing safety these days for the Arizona Cardinals. And you cannot say enough for the job done by this Arizona defense so far this postseason. You know, and they haven't been bad really all season long. I mean, I know there have been games, Minnesota, New England, Philadelphia, where they've struggled. But for the most part, the defense has been pretty decent. And they've been pretty decent against the run. Now, yes, the last two weeks when you look at them, they've been downright dominant. Second and nine. McNabb L.J. Smith good move by Smith to stay up on his feet and take it to the 22 a gain of five well Clancy Pendergast the defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals wants to bring a lot of pressure we saw on that play there he's got the linebackers up inside he's going to move the defensive front he's going to give a lot of different looks and try to bring people and get them in Donovan's face I thought it was interesting in talking with him that he really feels the key to this ball game is Donovan McNabb whereas almost everyone else that we've talked to in preparations against the Eagles they would tell you the key has been Brian Westbrook third down and four and now penalty flags a false start false start number 28 offense Five yard penalty. It's still third down. Andy Reid has taken his Eagles team to the fifth NFC Championship game in the last eight years. The 49ers, the last team to do it within that stretch of time, went to five and eight years back in the 90s. But he's one and three. The 04 season is the year the Eagles went to the Super Bowl and lost to New England. Cardinals are coming. McNabb has it batted away. Dansby got his hand up. Third and long, the Cardinals bring pressure again. They got Aaron Francisco, the safety coming. Dansby is as well. He recognizes that he can't get to Donovan. And then he goes up and knocks the ball down. Good job defensively by the Arizona Cardinals. David Akers will try to add to his record 18 straight in the postseason. Seven for seven this year. From 45. 
absolutely thumped. Eight play drive, 33 yards. McNabb had the big run to start it. And now David Akers will kick it away. With J.J. Arrington waiting deep. From inside the end zone, Arrington. And off is to James. Takes it outside and is dragged down by Will Demps, the rookie safety. We go down to the field and Chris Myers. Joe, in that initial offensive series by the Cardinals, Andy Reid had a look of concern. But on the Eagle bench, the Eagle coaches saying no free releases for the Cardinal receivers, emphasizing to the linebackers, you must jam the receivers so they cannot roam free. So the Eagle linebackers here in this series have a chance to respond. All right, Chris, thanks. Second and nine. Quinton Demps on that tackle is. The Cardinals have second and long. A blitz from Philadelphia. The pass out of the reach of the tight end, Leonard Pope. You know, you think back to that possession that the Eagles just had, and, you know, Rackers knocking the ball out of bounds on the kickoff and, and really setting. The Eagles up in great field position for that first possession and knowing that the Cardinals defensively did a nice job making a stop and forcing them to settle for the field goal and that's that's been a little bit of a problem for Philadelphia they've been very inconsistent in the red zone now they didn't get into the red zone here but in terms of scoring touchdowns and not having to settle for field goals another blitz they're all coming Warner over the middle hits Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald bounces off Asante Samuel and he's brought down a yard short of a first down. An eight yard gain, they needed nine. It's fourth and one. Hey, right now, that's the area of the field that Arizona has been working with Larry Fitzgerald. Gerald, right around there, the linebacker level on the crossing routes, get the ball out of Kurt's hands quickly, knowing that there's going to be pressure in his face. Nice tackle there, holding Fitzgerald short of the first down. Todd Haley said he likes to normally give Kurt Warner a little cooling off period when he gets back to the bench. Those two <laughs> went right toward each other. <laughs> Warner was upset about something as the punt will sail out of bounds off the foot of Ben Graham. Second drive for Philadelphia. Second time they're starting with decent field position. 303 left in the first. Philadelphia down by four. Extra men on the rush. Eagles pick it up and left alone is Deshaun Jackson. The pass behind him incomplete. And Donovan missed one there. Let's go back to what happened on the sideline between Kurt Warner and Todd Haley after that last possession. Well, you talked about Todd Haley giving Kurt Warner a little bit of a cooling off period. <laughs> well, Kurt wanted to discuss some of the things that are happening right now in the game. You can see Todd Haley just trying to get Kurt to calm down a little bit, but. You know, Kurt's obviously a very competitive guy. He knows what has to take place in order for them to have a chance to win this ball game. And I'll tell you what, he's the right guy for this franchise. Westbrook nowhere to go. Back to the line of scrimmage. Gerald Hayes, the first one there, but he wasn't alone. I'll tell you, on that first down play, the offensive line doing a good job picking up the blitzes that Arizona is bringing. And Donovan was afforded a lot of time and just a poor throw. I mean, he had a shot at Deshaun Jackson, and Deshaun Jackson would have run for a while had Donovan have been able to put that ball on him. You know, Aaron Francisco was there in coverage, but a lot of space. Third down and ten. Just three men on the rush in the pass in the air. Intercepted Francisco. And now he coughs it up. And Philadelphia's back on top of it. 
And a fresh set of downs for the Eagles. John Runyon comes away with that loose football. And Deshaun Jackson is the one that knocked it out of the arms of Aaron Francisco. You see, again, great protection for Donovan McNabb, and he just tries squeezing one in there. It's man coverage underneath. Roderick Hood underneath the route was going to be impossible to try to squeeze that ball in and off the deflection. But what a great job there by the rookie, Deshaun Jackson. A hustle play, comes in, goes right for the ball, doesn't worry about making the tackle as much as trying to strip it, and he's able to. You know, good things happen around the football. John Runyon, the, the veteran player, right there to recover it. A loss of eight overall on the play, which featured two turnovers, but a first and ten for the Eagles at their own 25. A little rollout by McNabb, and he's going to air it out down the left side. Has Greg Lewis, who turns and cannot hang on. Former Eagle Roderick Hood in coverage. Well, they wanted to go after Roderick Hood, and Greg Lewis, you're going to see, he's going to have about three yards. He comes off slow. He's by him. And if Donovan's able to get this ball out, now that's an unbelievable adjustment to the throw because he was expecting that over his inside shoulder, and Donovan threw it to his outside, and he had to turn with his back to the ball and then try to pick it up in the air. What a good job by Hood to get his hand in there and knock it out. Play clock at the top of your screen. It's second and ten. More time for McNabb, who throws low, but it's caught by Basket. A penalty flag is thrown on the play. As it is, it's 14 yards and a first down, but we'll check the flag. And what a good catch by Hank Basket. Part of the pass, holding number 20, defense. That penalty is declined. First down. It's it, was, it was a great catch Joe but if Donovan is able to make a good throw you're going to see this Hank Basket 84 it looks like he's in protection and then he releases there's nobody in the middle of the field there's no safety nobody back there and if you put that on him where he can catch it and run it's a touchdown. So a good catch on another poor throw from McNabb who has started four for eight. Delayed handoff to Westbrook, who picks up a first down into Arizona territory. 14 yards on the run. That's his longest of the postseason. And for a guy who, except for one 71 yard catch and run on a screen at Minnesota, really hasn't been much of a factor offensively for Philadelphia. No, he is not. And Travis LeBoy coming out of the game. He had missed three games. He came back in last week's playoff win over Carolina. So he takes a seat. Now Corral Buckhalter takes it and picks up nine, brought down by Ralph Brown. I tell you what, Joe, there's a lot of football obviously left to be played. But I think that regardless of whatever the outcome is in this game we're going to look back on the interception and the strip by Deshaun Jackson as a major pivotal point in the outcome because at 7 3 Arizona had the ball in great field position to take a pretty commanding lead here early and now Philadelphia is marching and faced with second and one. Handoff Buckhalter first down. He got to the 35 thrown backward and that is how the first quarter will come to an end. Deshaun Jackson set a Philadelphia rookie record with his 912 receiving yards during the regular season. What a play he made to force a fumble and strip Aaron Francisco of the football. And the Eagles offense has marched it to the Arizona 35. Hand off to Westbrook. And a good play made by Brian Robinson. No gain down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well Joe the Cardinals right defensive end getting a pretty good look when he came off the field. In fact the trainers have taken Travis LeBoy back into the locker room to get a better look. Apparently he has a left bicep injury and his return is questionable. 
All right, Pam. Thank you. Bertrand Berry now out of that right end spot. He shifts over to the other side. The Eagles have run the ball four straight plays. A blitz. McNabb in trouble and throws out of the reach of Westbrook. And they had Barry out there in coverage. You know, over the last two games that the Eagles have played, the defenses have done a pretty good job of running some twists in order to free guys up on Donovan McNabb. Minnesota was able to do it. The Giants were able to do it from time to time last week. And the Cardinals looking at those films saw something there as well and they get pressure on Donovan and force him to throw it sooner than he wanted. It's third and ten. Another three man rush. It's Selleck. Tries to hurdle his way to a first down and he is well short. Great effort but only six yards. Went over the top of Ralph Brown. But was brought down well short of first down yardage and the field goal unit back on for Philly. You know, it looked like the Eagles were trying to get the ball to Kevin Curtis on a square in and go route. But had he have just run a square in the whole middle of the field was vacated. It would have been an easy completion for a first down. Selleck trying to hurdle him for the first down. I tell you this offensive line though for the Eagles doing an outstanding job giving Donovan a lot of time to find receivers. Forty seven yard try by Akers. And he pulled it. Good field position for the Cardinals as they start at their own 38. David Akers had made 19 straight in the postseason, hooked a 47 yard drive. Here's a little throwback to Warner going downfield for Fitzgerald. Covered by Demps and Fitzgerald makes the play for the touchdown. A penalty flag is down back in the area where Warner let it go. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 97, late hit on the quarterback. The result of the play is a touchdown. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Fitzgerald has his second of this game. Well, they ran this in practice on Friday. We saw it. And Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, talked to Fitzgerald and said, you got to come off a little slower off the ball. You're going to outrun Kurt Warner's arm. And that's what he was able to do. And was there any doubt that Larry Fitzgerald, when the ball was in the air, that he'd be the one coming down with it? Well, no. I mean, once the ball is in the air and he's got one guy to beat, Fitzgerald's going to go up and get it. That's what makes him, if not the most, one of the most dangerous receivers in the NFL. Size, speed, and he can jump. You see Larry Fitzgerald come off the ball. He looks as if he's going to block. He slows it down, and then he wants to take off. And even with that, he still outran the throw. But just give him a chance. A lot of times, as a quarterback, you want to, if you miss, you want to miss long. With Larry Fitzgerald, if you miss, you want to miss short. Because he's able to go up, as we've seen so many times, in stride and make the difficult catch. And then there's the late hit on Kurt Warner. I don't know that I agree with that call, but it was irrelevant. And Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, who someday is going to make a terrific head coach in this league, is all charged up over on the sideline. And I liked what he told us. He said, I've told Kurt Warner to just stick with Fitzgerald. And even if he's covered, either stay with him because he's going to get open. Don't go through your progression and go to other receivers. Or B, if he is covered, just throw it and he'll go up and get it. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd throw to anybody else on the field. I mean, it's really remarkable. And, you know, a lot of times, as I was saying, if you underthrow a receiver, that's usually when bad things can happen, you know, on an interception. But with Larry Fitzgerald he's so good at protecting the quarterback and going up and getting the ball that that I think you almost want to under throw it because he's at a, a sizable advantage 
in that situation. And how about Todd Haley telling us at some point early we need a big play. And that's what has ignited us when we've won. Well, they just got it. Handoff is to Buckhalter. Picked up three. Now you go back and take a look at the job that J.J. Arrington did in making sure that he threw that ball backwards so that it was a legal play and then Kirk could allow it to get down the field. You know, Larry Fitzgerald, as good as he has been, he has played his best games here in this postseason. And you always talk about needing your best players to play big and big games. That young man's done it. Penalty flags fly, and we'll see if it's a false start. Looked like it, and it is. False start, number 81, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. It's Jason Avant. Second false start by the Eagles in what is a noisy dome. Typically they seat 65,000 in here. They're up to 70 plus. They added seats and sold out this game in six minutes after the Cardinals won in Carolina last week. Second and 12. Over the middle it's gunned into the arms of Kevin Curtis. One of the better throws by McNabb. A gain of 11. You know, really, Joe, you think about, you know, even in this first half, the number of opportunities that Philadelphia has had already, you know, for some big plays. We've shown them. And those are the, those are the difference in winning and losing. And Arizona, when they've had the opportunity to make the big play, they've made it. And when Donovan's had an opportunity to put the ball on somebody and get a, put a big play, they have failed. On third down and one play action. They put it in McNabb's right hand and down he goes. Darnell Duckett. There's a flag down at the 25. Each shot is indicating it's against the other team. Number 94, defense. Five yard penalty, first down. That's Antonio Smith. Yeah, you're going to see Brian Westbrook, and Antonio Smith comes up the field and bangs into him. And <laughs> yeah, you can't do that, big fella. You know, that's what, that's what the Rams had happened to them when they were playing New England in that Super Bowl against Marshall Falk. But you. <laughs> You can bang him, and I thought that was pretty good. But you can't just throw the guy to the ground. So an easy call and a first down by penalty for the Eagles. Here's Curtis. Hit in stride. Good moves in the open field. Kevin Curtis dragged down by Dominique Rogers Cromarty after a gain of 47. And that is exactly what this Philadelphia team needed. Well, they sure did. They needed a big play to get a little life back in them and and try to get something out of this possession here. The momentum all clearly behind the Arizona Cardinals slant route there to Kevin Curtis and you know he's just able to outrun everybody. Dominique Rogers Cromartie was in a pretty good position to make a tackle right there but he overran it. But you're not going to overrun him or outrun him anyway all the way to the end zone. One of the fastest players in the National Football League and has had an excellent rookie season. They fake a toss, hand to Buckhalter up the middle. And Buckhalter picks up seven. So if we talked earlier about the play that you could maybe forget about made by Deshaun Jackson, how about the call against Smith, a first down because of the penalty for Philadelphia, and then bang, that big completion to Kevin Curtis. Yeah, and, and, and th that's what's going to happen in, in this game. It's what happens in playoff games, that there's a lot of momentum shifts. and. You know the Eagles once the Cardinals got the big play in the touchdown this was an important drive for them to be able to put something 
together and get some points some kind of points and you're right a big penalty a huge penalty there on Antonio Smith. Second down and three passes to Lewis and he goes backward brought down by Antrell roll a loss of three. And now from the 15 yard line it's third and six. I got to tell you though Joe coming into this game you know when looking at the matchups a lot of times you look at the quarterbacks and determine OK what's going to happen based on those two guys you know in this game two veteran players and guys that have been in big games. But I tell you Donovan who at times can be erratic he is really missing the mark a lot here in this first half. Face Kurt Warner in the 2001 NFC Championship game in St. Louis. And lost to the Rams did McNabb and now a lot of contact no flag is thrown as a vaunt had Ralph Brown on his back. And the field goal unit again will come on for Philadelphia. Well, Avon work in the middle, and Ralph Brown just sits on the route. You know, good coverage, really. And did it get physical? Yeah, it got physical, and maybe they could have thrown a flag. But you know, I think overall, it was it was a good play by Ralph Brown. Avon got up screaming for the flag, didn't get it. Now a 33-yard try by Akers, who just missed from 47. And this time knocks it through. Brian Dawkins is on the sideline trying to pump up his teammates Dawkins who is one of three finalists for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award. Winner will be announced at Super Bowl 43 for all the work that these players do off the field community service as well as playing excellence and the other two finalists are Kerr Warner who he's playing against and Matt Burke the outstanding center for the Vikings. Here is J.J. Arrington. I'm about the two. Winding his way across the 25 to the 27. Well, the Eagles just got three points on the 33-yard field goal by Akers. And now this postseason, Philadelphia inside the red zone, just two for seven, scoring touchdowns. Warner stumbles as he somehow gets it to Edger and James. Just shy of midfield, good for 22. Hey, Kurt got stepped on or something coming out from underneath center. I'm not even sure how they were able to make that exchange. You see, as Kurt got stepped as he's trying to come out, but he is able to get it to Edger in and a nice run right up the gut. Inside guys there, Lyle Senline, the center, and Reggie Wells and Deuce Latouille moving out the hole. I'll tell you the Cardinals have not had a lot of big runs throughout this entire season. That's been one of the problems with their running game. But a nice gain on that last play. Delayed handoff to Hightower. Brought down by Joselio Hansen a gain of four. And these Cardinals are earning more and more respect every minute. Here in January underneath Arrington. Room to run. Inside the 30, 17 yards to J.J. Arrington. J.J. Arrington tends to get lost when you start talking about the playmakers for the Arizona Cardinals offensively, but when he's had his opportunities, he generally makes the most of them. You see him there, he's running a little drag route, and once he gets the ball in his hands, he's very elusive. A quick runner, done a nice job for this team. Tell you what, Warner doesn't make many mistakes, does he? No, he's so casual in the pocket. I mean, with pressure, and he's able to not get flustered by it. They delay the handoff to Hightower. And a good play made by Sheldon Brown as he came off the block again of four. I tell you, Joe, you look at this first half, and and of course Arizona with the big plays, and they've got two touchdowns, and Philadelphia has done a good job moving the football as well, but yet they've had to settle for the field goals, and so now we're looking at an eight-point deficit and 14-6 ball game, and. The Cardinals on another nice drive another methodical drive offensively and you know for the Eagles I, I think this is a really important drive for them. I mean they cannot afford to give up another touchdown right here. Second and seven what a start for Warner who is seven and two in his career during the postseason undefeated at home. Now the tight end Leonard Pope. 
Well-designed play as Pope gets it down inside the 15, a 12-yard catch and run. Well, Todd Haley's doing a heck of a job as offensive coordinator calling the plays. And right now, he's one step ahead of Jim Johnson. You've got Arrington, who's going to go out on a swing route. You watch Kurt Warner as he fakes it there, but right into the face of the blitz, here you've got the screen. And look at the people that he has out in front of him. Kurt Warner this season inside the red zone has thrown 27 touchdowns against only two interceptions. Eagles bring a blitz. Edger and James just pushes the pile back to the line of scrimmage. You know, the other thing about Kurt Warner, if you're Jim Johnson and you get down, when he gets into this situation, especially in the red zone, that's when he really likes to come after the quarterback, see if he can't create a mistake. Kurt Warner, the fourth rated passer in the National Football League against the Blitz. 14 touchdowns this year, only four interceptions. You're rarely going to get to him. So you've got to be real careful when you decide to do it, because when you do, then all of a sudden you've got Larry Fitzgerald one on one, and we've already seen you don't want that. Second and 10. Another Blitz. Pass underneath. Preston. I like what Kurt Warner told us regarding the blitzing of Jim Johnson. Preston very close to first down yardage will get a measurement. He said we are going to attack Philadelphia's blitz and they have in this half. And the big key is what they worked on all week is is knowing it's going to come. That's fine. We're not going to get a big play every time they bring the blitz but we've got to at least have positive plays. Kurt Warner knew exactly where to go with the football. He saw the blitz the entire way. Breston sees it. They put it on him. Easy completion. And enough for a first down. Kurt Warner, who in 1998 was the third quarterback in St. Louis for a Rams team that went 4 and 12 under Dick Vermeil. He revived that franchise in 99 after Trent Green went down in the preseason, took them to a Super Bowl, got the victory over Tennessee. Two time league MVP. And now he finds himself trying to take the Arizona Cardinals into the Super Bowl. A toss. Arrington. Not much room to run. A pickup of one. How did his time end in St. Louis? Kurt Warner got to, lost the Super Bowl in the 2001 season. In 02, he made six starts, broke his hand. And then lost his hold on that job to Bulger in 2003. Was with the Giants, mentored Eli Manning in 04. Came to the Cardinals, made 10 starts in Arizona in 05. Five starts in 06. Took over week six last year, and he makes his 30th consecutive start at the age of 37. Larry Fitzgerald at the bottom. They fake that way and then throw. Fitzgerald ends up on the ground, and a penalty flag is thrown. Samuel in coverage. Pass interference, number 22, defense. First down at the one-yard line. I think all 70,000 people at the game knew where the ball was going when you saw one-on-one -on -one coverage with Asante Samuel. And they run the slant route and, and a good call. I mean, <laughs> Asante said he was going for the ball. And in playing the ball, he just decided to go right through Fitzgerald. Been bothered by a bad hip. Looks to be in a little pain over on the sideline. It's first and goal. Fitzgerald. He's got another. Fitzgerald he's going to start to the slant like he just ran and then he goes to the corner Sheldon Brown trying to take away the inside but a lot of room there for Kurt Warner to lay the ball to the outside 21 to 6 
That Eagles defense has to wonder what has hit him as we go back to the touchdown. Yeah, and he's one on one. Sheldon Brown is, and Fitzgerald just does a great job. I mean, you got you got no chance. I mean, Asante Samuel one on one couldn't stop him. Sheldon Brown couldn't stop him. You know, Todd Haley talked to us about what he told Fitzgerald coming into this season. He said last year you were a one trick pony and you've got to learn to do some things a little bit differently to continue to be the great player that you can become. Well, <laughs> I tell you he's anything but a one trick pony yeah. now. I mean everybody knows Jim Johnson told us coming into this game we have got to control Larry Fitzgerald and yet they've not been able to do any of it. Here is a kick that hit the boundary they throw a flag and we'll get the call went over the head and touched maybe by Abia Mary but the officiating crew will sort it out could be the second kickoff out of bounds by Neil Rackers yeah this is the key here did he touch it and no it didn't look at least from here that he did you know he almost made a really bad play on that ball trying to field it with it that close to the sideline. Well I'll tell you what I'm not even sure that ball went out of bounds. It took a funny hop. I think it caught the finger of Abi Amiri. But it's interesting to look at this replay again because that's obviously a live ball. Well we got to see here whether or not it went out of bounds and it did not. I mean, I don't know that it. The feel is that the kick touched the receiving team player and then touched out of bounds. The ball is dead, out of bounds at that spot. It's first down, Philadelphia. Obviously, if it's touching Abby Amiri along the boundary, then you have that call. But I'm not so sure that after that ball checked up, that when it touched Abby and Mary that he was out of bounds or the ball ever went out of bounds and the Arizona Cardinals and Ken Wisenhunt they're going to challenge it and see if they end up with this live football. Yeah there's a lot of things happening on this particular play one is it looked like the ball was going to go out of bounds and so Abby and Mary you know you'd say well he should have let it go out of bounds but it does not go out of bounds now is it touching him while he was out of bounds himself. Well, they obviously show the replay on the board here in the crowd. You can hear their reaction. Does it ever hit him? I, I would say it doesn't. Well, that's the look right there where it looks like it maybe caught his left forearm. That's the only part of Abia Mary it could have hit after that bounce. If you can make the case, and I don't think we've seen a definitive view of it either way. And remember, importantly, the call is that it's Philadelphia's ball down on the field. Have you seen any evidence that's indisputable then which would turn the call around. And obviously if the Arizona Cardinals take over the way they're rolling right now this could be deadly to the Philadelphia Eagles and their chances to come back in this game. And so the officiating crew is getting together and they still haven't announced what Ken Wisenhunt is challenging here. But here it is again. Well, he's clearly out of bounds and now the question is the you know, the did it touch him? The ball went out of bounds. By rule that kills the play and it is not a reviewable play. So they're not allowing Ken Wisenhunt to challenge it. Tell you what, though, Joe, that says a lot about Ken Wisenhunt. I mean, you go down there, you get the touchdown to go up 21-6, and then you 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 kick off with that kick in the hopes that you can get down there and recover it. I mean, he's going for the knockout punch, and then you've got confidence that defensively you're going to be able to stop him if, in fact, you don't get it. But a lot of things working right there on that play, and, and the Eagles are fortunate that that they're getting the ball back. Ken Wisenhunt's now going back down to that spot on the field where the ball checked up. The ball, first of all, the officiating crew just put it up at the 40, and now they've moved it all the way back to that spot where it touched Abi Amiri just outside the 26. And that's where the Eagles will take over, and only because they blew the play dead and the ball was ruled out of bounds on the field. Is it not reviewable? Play over. 
even though the call may not have been correct. I tell you, I like I like the call by Ken Wisenhunt. Not a lot of second year head coaches in their first NFC championship game would have done that. Pass to Selleck. The Eagles need a score here at the end of the half. Second and two. A blitz. McNabb drops it off. Selleck again. Makes a good move. Picks up a first down as he got far enough away from Dansby for a five yard gain. Each side has all three of their timeouts remaining, so plenty of time left for the Eagles. A quick huddle as we approach the two minute warning. Yeah, they want to get one more playoff before the two minute warning, which they do. Another blitz. McNabb throws to an open part of the field. He was in the pocket, but no flag. I think you're going to get it, though. There was no receiver in the area, and there it is. The late flag for grounding is Chike O'Keefer. Number five offense. Kurt Warner with a perfect quarterback rating in this first half of the NFC Championship game, and for McNabb, just 51.6. A loss of 12 on the intentional grounding call. It's second and 22. Eagles need to get something going here before the end of the half. Selleck has been a favorite target. Takes a bite out of the 22 yards. Picks up eight Ralph Brown on the stop. And now a timeout is taken. Philadelphia takes the timeout. Third down and 14 for the Eagles. McNabb's got to make a play down the middle of the field for Avant cannot get to it just out of his reach and now the Cardinals will have plenty of time to add to their lead before the half well they go with a three man rush the Arizona Cardinals do and you can see they've got guys down in coverage with man to man underneath and Ralph Brown doing a good job it would have taken an absolute perfect throw in order to get that completion. Good stop there by Arizona defensively. You give you give the Eagles relatively decent field position by you know the kickoff that Wisenhunt went with, but they answered and were able to make the stop. Rocka punts it and it's a good one. Breston from inside the 10 gets around Greg Lewis and hops out just across the 15. But well, when Fitzgerald is doing the things that he's doing in this game it, it really changes everything that Jim Johnson then wants to do defensively because for the most part if you're going to bring pressure you got one on one outside you try to limit the big plays but since they've not been able to do that now you become a little more cautious in what you want to do on the defensive side a spin and the throw to Anquan Bolden. And a penalty flag comes in at the end of the play after a five yard pickup by the Cardinals. Well, I don't understand that at all. I mean, that's ridiculous after by play, Quentin Dennis. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 39, defense. Late hit, 15 yard penalty, first down. You know, obviously a pretty dumb play there by Demps but if the attempt is to try to rattle Kurt Warner that's not going to happen. You know, it's just not going to happen. This guy I've seen him hit too many times in in games and he just gets up and keeps on playing. But that's a costly penalty. I mean you're talking about right before the half. They've already given up enough points but the Cardinals I mean they can pretty much just shut the door on this one if they are able to come away with another touchdown going in. It's the second time the Eagles have roughed. Kurt Warner. Warner steps up, throws, and caught by Bolden on the deflection. Quentin Michael got his hands on it, nearly picked it off, and Anquan Bolden was waiting for it. Good for 32. I'm not sure how he didn't catch that. Quentin Michael is in great position. Oh, that ball hit the ground. We're inside two minutes. That'll be a booth review. 
But this ball was trapped against the, the ground by the body of Anquan Bolden. That play will come back. Yeah, that'll definitely come back. But, you know, the bigger picture is a chance for Philadelphia to get the ball back with still time and maybe do something themselves. After reviewing the play, the ball hit the ground before the receiver gained control. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down on the 36-yard line. Police put one minute and 20 seconds back on the game clock. As a result of the pass being incomplete, Arizona is not charged with a timeout. So they have all three of their timeouts remaining, and it's second and ten. There's Fitzgerald across from Asante Samuel. And Warner and Arrington bang into each other. And Arrington is wrapped up back near the 30 by Chris Clemens. Yeah, there was a miscommunication there in the huddle on the exchange between Kurt Warner and and J.J. Arrington, as you're going to see. And right now, I think with the down and distance that Arizona is faced with, that you know they'd like to be able to just run this thing out. But a, a timeout there by Philadelphia. So now Philadelphia will, as Troy said, spend their second timeout, try and get a stop here with third down coming up, third down and 15, and an opportunity maybe. To get something done here before the half because so far this game's been dominated by Arizona. Yeah, and yet I think they also have to be careful here before the half. You know, if they start pressing and trying to do something, you know, too aggressively, that could backfire on them here going into the half. There's a part of me that would say, hey, you know, let's go in there at halftime and, and try to figure this thing out. You know, a lot of veteran players have been in these types of games, and, and yet this is a franchise, at least recently, that hasn't enjoyed a lot of success in these championship games. A blitz, a quick throw, and a first down for Arizona to Jeremy Urban. His first catch. And 18 yards, and Warner knows how to handle a blitz. I'll tell you what, right now, everything's going right for the Arizona Cardinals. Third and long. The Eagles thinking with the timeout that they could stop him and get the ball back. They come with the blitz. They just, they just fail to cover up Jeremy Urban. I mean, you can see how quickly Kurt Warner recognizes it. In fact, he's not even able to really get a grip on the ball. But when you bring the pressure, you've got to cover up the receivers. And nobody was there with Urban. I tell you what, Todd Haley continues to prove, as you look at Jim Johnson, defensive coordinator of the Eagles, who is frustrated here in this half. Haley just continues to put the pedal down and stay aggressive. He did it at the end of the Atlanta game here at home, the wild card weekend. And when you think they're going to throw to try and take some time off the clock, he drops back and lets Warner do the rest. A pump fake by Warner. Underneath, it's Fitzgerald left alone. How can Larry Fitzgerald run across the field? All by himself 14 yards and another first down and the reason that Todd Haley can keep his foot on the pedal is because Kurt Warner is making good decisions and they wanted to take a shot up the field and it wasn't there and rather than force it Kurt comes underneath then to Larry Fitzgerald you're going to see he wanted to get the ball up the sideline on a big play it's not there he knows where he's got to go with the football in fact Todd Haley as we were talking about a little bit earlier says he's the best at going through his progressions well that was a good example of it went to his first second not there Fitzgerald on his third pretty good option as yeah. your third read. yeah Warner throws over the head of Anquan Bolden a blitz and finally Warner goes down in the arms of Trent Cole a loss of seven to bring up third down in a mile. Well, that was one the Eagles really needed because they were knocking on the door, the Cardinals were, in getting into field goal range. Trent Cole, he just is able to work right by Mike Gandy, and they had inside pressure also. We've seen Kurt Warner have time to be able to step up into the pocket, but that time there was just nowhere for him to step up. For Trent Cole, his first sack in the last four games, and now the game clock is winding down. Third down and 17. Arizona with two timeouts left. And back on this side of the field, it's Bolden. Anquan Bolden is wrestled down short of the 30. And a timeout is taken by Arizona. And they'll have a shot at three more points. This is the second charge timeout, Arizona, 30 second timeout. And Kurt Warner, he gets leveled at the end of this play. 
the right at the very end gets it out just in time. Good call though again by Todd Haley at least giving them a chance with a field goal attempt here at the end of the half. Yeah they didn't try to get all of the first down yardage necessary they got 13 and because of a 13 yard play it's a manageable 49 yard field goal try by Neil Rackers who's coming off one of his best seasons in the NFL. Becomes a three score game if Rackers hits this. Good snap, good hold. Rackers. Got it. What a half. Neil Rackers has been a little shaky on kickoffs. Kicked only one out of bounds during the regular season. He had one that cleanly went out of bounds and one that was touched by an Eagles player as it headed out of bounds already in this game. A little pop up kick. Taken from just inside the 20 by Buckhalter. And good starting field position. For the Philadelphia Eagles we go down to Chris Myers. Well Joe the Eagles went into the locker room at halftime with their heads down despondent. They came out angry except for Donovan McNabb with his trademark smile. Defensively a lot of discussion about their linebackers being confused. They wanted to blitz just 35 percent of the time against Kurt Warner that may increase in the second half. Offensively Brian Westbrook not much of a factor not because of his health because of the Arizona defense. They want to get him more involved here in the second half. All right Chris. We'll see if that happens right out of the gate. Starting at their own 39. Quick throw, and it's knocked away by O'Keefer. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, with that one exception, boy, the Cardinals did a great job of handling the Eagles blitz. And I talked to Ken Wisenhunt about that. I said, how have you been so successful? He said, you know what? We've been successful because of the plan we used, and we're going to continue to use the same plan in the second half, and that is to mix it up, use a combination of the run and the pass. And finally, I said, Ken, everybody knows you're a half away from going to the Super Bowl. He says, Pam, I am not thinking about that, and I won't let my players do it either. Thank you Pam second down and 10 for Philadelphia. McNabb's in trouble penalty flag goes down McNabb somehow stays on his feet and then throws to Klecko his fullback who gets a block has the entire sideline to maneuver but there's a penalty flag back inside the 35 in the area of a hold. But we'll check we'll wait and check the call what a play by McNabb. Just keeping that thing alive. Holding number 49 offense. 10 yard penalty. It's still second down. So that was Klecko who eventually got the pass from McNabb and went 20 yards. Well, Klecko's the fullback and he's blocking O'Keefer and O'Keefer goes down low and yeah, that's a good call. I mean, he, he tackles him and then throws him to the ground. Kevin Curtis was open right from the beginning. He ran right by Roderick Hood. It looked like Hood thought he was going to get help from Adrian Wilson. It would have come back anyway. Of course, Donovan taking a hit at the end of that one, but even missing Curtis, if they don't get the hold, you know, a nice game, but pretty obvious call. But at least by keeping the play alive McNabb saved it down and it's second down and 20 over the middle pass is caught what a catch by Avant who has rapidly become a guy that McNabb looks to during the postseason for big plays that was good for 14 on second and 20 Jason Avant actually may have the best hands on the team. I mean he's very good on the inside not overly fast you see there I mean for him to be able to contort his body and go back and make that play just an excellent catch on his part makes it a manageable third and six McNabb throws pass is caught and it's good enough for a first down to Sean Jackson. Nice work there by Deshaun Jackson because that ball was contested and being able to make the contested catches and be physical and be bigger than what you are at the point of the catch is is a nice luxury to have. 
Deshaun Jackson able to make the play against the other rookie, Dominique Rogers Cromarty, who for the most part has been on him throughout the entire game. And has shut him down, only one catch. Hand off is to Westbrook. Picks up two. You, know, you look at that first half, Joe, and, and Philadelphia, you know, they moved the ball. And I just think that you look at it and you got to remind yourself of that because the, the Cardinals did so well moving the football and coming away with touchdowns. But Philadelphia did a good job of moving the ball. They they just got to finish drives, and that's what they've not done. They have they have struggled at the end of these drives just being able to get them to the end zone. As we see, certainly with the score what it is, you know, field goals aren't going to get it done. Second and eight. McNabb down the sideline has Curtis but overthrows him. Another open receiver for McNabb and another miss by Donovan McNabb. I'm afraid the Eagles are going to go back and look at this film and they're going to see a lot of opportunities that they had to make plays that I don't know will ultimately change the outcome of the game but certainly would have made things a lot different than what they are right now in the third quarter. You know, as you said another opportunity to get a throw and to get a big gain and, and maybe if you're able to catch that inbounds you know in the field of play going away from the defender maybe even a touchdown. Now third and eight. There's Adrian Wilson ball comes out. Arizona has it. It's the Cardinals defense making plays and Adrian Wilson on a blitz. A sack and fumble. Yeah, Adrian Wilson, they just bring more than they can pick up. Donovan doesn't see it coming and an easy sack. You are witnessing the revival of this franchise, which is playing in this new stadium. Been playing here since 2006, a big part of what's gone on here. And the momentum keeps building for the Arizona Cardinals as Edger and James bounces off Bunkley and takes it to the 39 a gain of four back to the fumble by McNabb watch Adrian Wilson he's going to come up and time this he's going to get up on the line but you know if you take a look Trey Thomas here the left tackle he should have been able to pick this up Todd Harriman's the left guard sees it but Trey Thomas does not come out and block Adrian Wilson and that's why Donovan McNabb thinking that he was going to have his backside protected and got hit and then fumbled. Second down and six as McNabb has turned it over twice in all three postseason games. And it looked like Gandy started too soon. Full start, number 69, offense, five yard penalty. It's still second down. So that is Gandy and this. Arizona defense and there's a guy who's been here longer than anybody else for this defense Adrian Wilson going to his second Pro Bowl here after the 2008 season and he told us a few weeks ago he felt like there was unfinished business here and it was his pride that kept him here in a Cardinal uniform and here is his team playing brilliantly in an NFC championship game trying to get it to the Super Bowl. Handoff is to Edger and James, and he stumbles for two yards. Yeah, Adrian Wilson saying that you know he had some opportunities to go to other places, but he never even considered it. Never wanted to go anywhere else to play, and I think that says a lot. It says a lot to to what he's about, knowing that he came here, an organization that had been struggling, and just, and just wanted to be a part of a winner and being a part of building something. It's third down and nine. With the Cardinals at the moment outside field goal range. Another blitz. Warner gets hit as he let it go, and he overthrows Bolden, who was wide open down the middle. Well, you called it, Joe. They they bring the blitz again. Philadelphia, this is the first throw that Kurt Warner has missed. This is a real good look at it right here. 
And Anquan Bolden, what a great release he gets off the line of scrimmage against Quentin Michael. And we haven't seen many Aaron throws like that from Kurt Warner, but the pressure at the last minute gets him to the ground. May have affected the throw. Good work by Trent Cole as Ben Graham hits it end over end. And Deshaun Jackson. Second possession for this Eagles offense in the second half and for the Cardinals defense 11 takeaways this postseason 37 points off those takeaways and off Westbrook a little more of a factor running the ball a little better more room to run second down and three here's another one this one for Jackson. Ball underthrown and well played by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. Okay, Dominique Rogers Cromarty is, you know, he's had an outstanding rookie season. He's had an outstanding postseason. He just got better and better as the year went along. Great coverage right there on Deshaun Jackson. You're not going to outrun this guy. I know there's a lot of Eagle fans out there that know the speed that Deshaun Jackson has. Dominique Rogers Cromarty is as fast as anyone. And so you're not going to just run by him. You got to try to set him up. With some things you're doing within the routes. And a big body, 6 2, 182. Third and three. Pass underneath is caught by Selleck. Selleck gets whacked from behind by Chike O'Keefer in a gain of seven and a first down for the Eagles. Well, you think about it, and they've still got a long way to go here on this possession, but as, as much as the Cardinals have outplayed Philadelphia in this game, and there's the there's the hit and that doesn't feel very good. You don't have any padding down there. So when you take a helmet in the back low back you feel that one for a while and it looks like Selleck is feeling it. But if the Eagles just put together one drive and get a touchdown and if they were to go for two and you're talking about a 10 point game anything can happen. Play action McNabb that one is tipped away. Adrian Wilson made the play on LJ Smith. In case you're wondering, in the category of biggest comebacks in any championship game, 18 points. Indianapolis did it to New England in January of 07, the year they won it all and beat the Bears in the Super Bowl. Handoff on second and 10. Westbrook making a play. Dragged down by Aaron Francisco, a gain of eight. That's a good job on second down of at least getting it to a pretty manageable third down because in this game, Philadelphia has not been very good on third down. You see Bertrand Barry, he's having to play more because of Travis LeBoy and Trey Thomas doing a good job against him, creating just enough for Westbrook to get inside that block. The boy is out with a biceps injury and now with two tight ends in the game it's third and two. They fake the handoff McNabb throws for Selleck who has a team high seven catches. Six yards and a first down for Philadelphia. Well, the Eagles have, have, you know, you say get it to third and manageable, but yet for the year, this this is a team that has not been particularly good on third and short. As a matter of fact, second worst in the National Football League. You'd think they'd be better at that, and that's that's really one of the reasons. Even earlier on third and one, we saw them throw the ball. I don't think they have a whole lot of confidence running the ball in some of those situations. But a nice job there of being able to convert. This so far in the postseason, the Eagles' best game running it with 78 yards. McNabb is sacked again. Adrian Wilson again. So we've been talking a lot about the job that Arizona has done handling the, the blitz. Well, Philadelphia is the contrast to that. They've not. And Trey Thomas, he gets beat on the outside, and there was nowhere to go for Donovan McNabb to step up into the pocket because of Adrian Wilson coming off the blitz inside. Lancey Pendergast, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinals, getting very aggressive here. 
As the Eagles just get it away. Over the middle. It's Hank Basket and he drops it. Right in his gut. And it's third and 19. Pendergast, the defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals, telling us that he actually studies game tape of the Eagles' defense over the offseason to see what Jim Johnson is doing with his blitz schemes. And he's had the upper hand here today. He well, sure has. A young, bright defensive coach and a defensive coordinator here in Arizona for a few years. He's done a good job, doing a great job in this one. Third down and 19. This one down the middle of the field and caught. What a play for Philadelphia. Kevin Curtis. Biggest play of this game for the Eagles. Well, and they needed it too. You're talking about needing to get a big play and get yourself in some kind of position. They've got two defenders. Good coverage here. Kevin Curtis goes by Francisco with Roderick Hood in the trail position. And this one is a perfectly thrown ball by McNabb. I'll throw it to the inside let Curtis run away from the defenders to make the reception and that's exactly how it was executed 50 yard completion to Kevin Curtis on third and 19. That's Deshaun Jackson and a good tackle by Dominique Rogers Cromartie. It's amazing how many times when you make a big play like that that it then turns into something really positive and for it to be positive here for Philadelphia it means coming away with a touchdown you know getting inside the red zone here and moving the football on this possession if they have to settle for a field goal I, I don't think that they're going to walk off this field back over to the sidelines feeling real good about it second and six. Quarterback draw McNabb down to the five. Ten yard run by Donovan McNabb. Well, you watch the inside push that Philadelphia is able to get on Brian Robinson. Watch here. There's Brian Robinson and they're going to double team him. Jamal Jackson there and Nick Cole and they just drive him ten yards deep. McNabb used his legs for a 10 yard run just outside the five first and goal Westbrook nowhere to go Antonio Smith made the play second and goal for an Eagles team that this postseason is two for seven inside the red zone converting chances into touchdowns. Yeah and they they were able to get away with that against Minnesota and then last week against the Giants because defensively they were just so dominant. But the defense with them struggling here today the offense has to pick it up for them like the defense did for them in the other games. McNabb throws and completes to Selleck for the touchdown and the Eagles offense does convert. Good throw from McNabb and Selleck has stepped up and become the primary target for Philadelphia in this game. Yeah, he really has. I mean, you can tell the confidence that Donovan McNabb has in him. You know, he runs the slant route and a, and a well thrown ball. You're going to see he's going to come from the left of the screen and in behind that defender, you see, and a good route by Selleck against Roderick Hood and, and a great drive by Philadelphia overcoming the big third down there to Kevin Curtis and now at least you put a little pressure back on Arizona. Brent Selleck had one receiving touchdown as a penalty flag comes in on the extra point. One receiving touchdown for Selleck during the regular season he has two this postseason. Dominique Rogers Cromartie ended up running into David Akers. Two fouls on the play. Offside number 29 defense lined up in the neutral zone. That foul is declined. Running into the kicker number 29 defense. That five yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The try is good. Timeout. Selleck gets the touchdown. 
Kevin Curtis the big one the 50 yard catch set it up. Selig eight catches 46 yards and the score. And now Akers kicks it out of bounds. And he'll hang his head headed back over to the sideline. Kickoff out of bounds. The Arizona's ball at the 40 yard line. Timeout. Here's a look that David Akers got going back to the sideline from Andy Reid, his head coach, after kicking it out of bounds. The penalty is 30 yards from the spot of the kick. So because Akers kicked it from the 35, the ball is at the Arizona 35 instead of 40. No, well, I'm surprised that's all he got. I mean, the offense goes down, gets a touchdown, and then you give momentum right back to Arizona Here's with a bad kick. A blitz, and Warner just happy to get rid of it. Bunkley was in there. As the Eagles, no surprise, brought extra men rushing Kerr Warner. No, but at least by Philadelphia going down and being able to get the touchdown, at least now they're going to make Arizona continue to play, as opposed to getting conservative and trying to run the football and then not having any real urgency on third down and keeping the ball out of Philadelphia's hands. 404 left in the third quarter, an 11 point game. Second and 10. More trouble for Warner and he overshoots Hightower and Warner got plastered at the end of that play. The Eagles have just one sack in this game but they're starting to get a little closer around Kerr Warner and the hits are getting a little bit harder. I mean you're going to see right here he gets sandwiched right at the end of this and and Kurt is as tough as they come. You, know, you talk about all the things that he does well throwing the football and reading the things out and going through his progressions. I mean you've got to be tough in order to hang in there and make some of the throws under duress like he has today. Third down and 10 Warner steps up has to slide and down he goes. Play was made by Abi Amiri. And now the Philadelphia defense which has been so good down the stretch for the Eagles steps up makes plays. And a loss of four on that sack by Victor Abiyamiri. Well, just a great job defensively by Philadelphia on that series. We talked about it. Akers kicking the ball out of bounds. You give the Cardinals good field position. In order to climb back into this thing, you've got to have some defensive stands. And that's what they were able to get. That drive took 14 seconds off the clock and went backward five yards. Two incompletions and a sack. Deshaun Jackson trying to make something happen. And Terry Bradshaw and his brother Gary Bradshaw are here. One of those two will hand out the trophy at the end of this game to the team that wins this championship. Starting at their own 39. Protection for McNabb. Curtis underneath into Arizona territory and it's getting a little uneasy in this building for Cardinal fans a gain of 15. Boy it is isn't it because you hear the crowd really understanding the urgency right now on this drive. They got Kevin Curtis just running a crossing route and the linebackers going deep and they're able to find him there you know in that void. And Kevin Curtis is having himself a pretty good game hasn't caught a lot of balls but he's been He's been open on a number of them and doing a good job when he does catch it getting up the field. Last time the Eagles had it it ended with a touchdown and on the drive they were three for three on third down putting a 50 yard completion to Curtis on third and 19. Now Curtis down the sideline and Roderick Hood had better position for the ball than Curtis second and ten. Hand off to Westbrook. And a good play was made in the hole. And it was Hayes, the middle linebacker, who made it a gain of four. Third and six coming up. You know, this gets interesting right here to me. I mean, looking ahead, if it's third and six, and, and if you're Andy Reid and you're saying, you know, we're kind of in four down territory here, I think that that has a big impact on what he does on third down. But. You know, if they're able to, if they don't convert here and they're able to make it manageable, I wouldn't be surprised at all to then see him go for it on four. It would be a 61-yard field goal from this spot. McNabb throws and 
completes to Deshaun Jackson with a rolling catch as he headed out of bounds. And on third and six, a 10 yard completion in front of Dominique Rogers Cromarty. Yeah, Arizona, they bring the pressure and, you know, a good job on the outside there by Deshaun Jackson of being able to go down and, and make this catch. And Cromarty playing very soft on him there. Under two to play in the third quarter. Eagles climbing back in it. Back to the ground. It's Westbrook. Good play by Hayes. A gain of three. Hey, what though, Joe? Pretty interesting right now. I mean, with this possession, and I, I've got to believe that Philadelphia is over there on their sideline saying, hey, we took the best shot Arizona had. I mean, we can't play any worse than what we had played there in the first half of that ball game. And they're they're in this. And if they're able to get three points here, certainly they want a touchdown. But if they're able to get three points, I mean, you talk about putting a little pressure on this Arizona team, a young football team. How would they respond to that? Play clock is down to four. And the Eagles, because of it, have to use a timeout. And so now McNabb will go over to the sideline and talk about it. Donovan on that last drive, five for eight, 74 yards, the touchdown throw to Selleck. Yeah, he did not have a good first half, but it seems like he's starting to heat up and get his feet underneath him and make better throws. And that's going to be the key. I mean, if they're going to win this game, it's going to be because of Donovan McNabb. And the other part of it, it's going to be because their defense comes up and plays like they did on that last possession, forcing a three and out. That's how they climb back into it. That's how they're able to go on and win. You know, we talk about the Eagles being a veteran group of guys, you know, Donovan McNabb and playing in big games, Brian Dawkins, Brian Westbrook, you know, all these guys, and that's true. And right now, maybe that then starts to benefit them a little bit. But if they are able to come away with some points, you know, you get a real taste then of Arizona and how they're going to handle that kind of pressure in a real big ball game. A trip to the Super Bowl on the line. Arizona leading by 11, second and seven. Westbrook at the bottom of your screen. McNabb over the middle has Selleck again. Stays up into the end zone. Touchdown Philadelphia. That for Selleck ties an Eagles postseason record for catches during the postseason. That's his ninth of the game. His second touchdown of the day for a guy who had only one touchdown during the regular season. It's his third of the postseason. Well, maybe that explains why he's been getting so open today. And so down by five, not going for two. The extra point is no good by David Akers. I tell you, I don't know what's gotten into David Akers, but he has not done much right in this game. See, they didn't get the laces turned either. I mean, he had to kick the laces. Good snap, not a good hold. Well, David Akers during the regular season was 45 for 45 on extra points and now misses this. And we go back to the touchdown to sell it. Yeah, there he starts to the outside and then goes back to the post, runs a very good route, and that's what created the separation and then the spacing for Donovan to be able to put the ball on him. Just good execution. I got to tell you, though, Joe, I'm a little surprised that, that Philadelphia didn't go for two. You know, I know there's still another quarter left to play, but I really thought they would go for two in that situation. And there's Hank Basket who, who makes a good block. I don't know that they would have been able to get to Selleck anyway, but why not make a block when you get a chance? We got two and one. And after the timeout with the play clock winding down, the 31 yard touchdown to Selleck with a catch and run. And then I'm with you. I mean, he could have made a strong point to go for two in that position. They don't. They think they're taking the sure route with getting the extra point. He had missed one all year. And then Akers hooked it. 
and it's still a five point game. But the Eagles have scored 13 points in three minutes and 19 seconds as they trail by five. Starting at their own 20. Here's a blitz. Handoff is to Edger and James. Pick up of three. Patterson on the stop down to Chris Myers. Joe, defensive back coach Sean McDermott, the secondary and go-between on the headset on the sideline from Jim Johnson upstairs. At the end of the second quarter or near that point, Andy Reid kind of intercepted the conversation from upstairs to middle linebacker Stuart Bradley. And a, an adjustment has been made not only in communication but the play to middle linebacker Stuart Bradley. And the message is put more pressure on Kurt Warner to get us back in this game. That has happened here in the second half. It's second and seven. Quick throw. This one's batted back into the hands of Warner, who runs with it. We begin the fourth quarter on a third down play, third and three for the Cardinals. Up by five now. Out of the backfield, Edger and James. Big completion. To the 10 year back out of Miami. Well, they got a King Jordan that's in coverage. You're going to see here, and then he just gets caught up. He's going to try to go underneath that rather than as soon as he sees Edger and James go out on the swing route, he had to make a decision whether or not to go underneath that route, the wide receivers, or go over the top. He went underneath, and that's why Edger was as open as he was. A 16 yard completion to Edger and James on third and three. He's the tailback. He gets it here. And a decent run on first down of five. Just to go back on that two point question for the Eagles. A lot of head coaches don't like to try for two before the fourth quarter because they feel like if they don't make it, they're always chasing that point that they left out there. Well, not only did they not go for two points. But they didn't even get the point after the touchdown because Akers hooked it. And this is a Philadelphia team who during the regular season did not go for a two point conversion all year. Yeah, I think the only reason you wouldn't go for two there was if you anticipated that Arizona would score more points. Otherwise you go for two and you at least cut it to a three point game. Second and five and Hightower is brought down by Dawkins. The emotional leader of this defense. Playing in his 201st game with the Philadelphia Eagles, all time leader in that category. And he's been just outstanding through this postseason. Whenever they've had to make a play defensively, more times than not, it's been Brian Dawkins who's come up with it. They could use a big play from him here. It's third down and five. Another blitz. Warner throws off his back foot incomplete. Backpedaling as he let it go in the direction of Larry Fitzgerald, and it's fourth down. Yeah, and you can see the frustration now on Kurt Warner's face. You know, things were going pretty well there in that first half, and he was getting all the things that he had hoped that he would. Well, that hasn't been the case here in the second half. He's gotten pressure, but he's had pressure on him throughout this ball game, but there just has not been the open receivers that there was earlier. See Victor Abiyamiri bringing pressure inside. Could have called a holding there on, on Arizona. And now Graham to punt it. Hits it end over end. Fair catch by Deshaun Jackson. Look at the numbers this postseason during the fourth quarter for Donovan McNabb. A perfect quarterback rating so far this postseason, but having to play from behind. With 13 minutes left, down 24 19. Play action, setting up a screen for Buckhalter, has blocking in front of him. Good start to the drive for the Eagles. 12 yards, a first down at their own 26. So the Arizona, they bring the pressure here too, and Brian Westbrook does a great job of picking it up off the play action there. Goes down low and puts a good block on Gerald Hayes. And look at the execution. Carell Buckhalter Harriman's knocks out Antrell Roll. And then Nick Cole leads the way up front. Oh. 
Larry Fitzgerald has been shut out. No catches in the second half. Best way to defend him is to keep him on the sideline. Here is Avant making the catch. He's out to the 35 yard line could not get around Adrian Wilson a gain of nine. I got to tell you Jason Avant had so much more room to run you see Donovan McNabb and I think he was telling him the same thing. He's in the open field one on one. All he's got to do there is make Adrian Mil Adrian Wilson miss. He decides to go back inside and look at all the grass out here and you'd think a wide receiver against Adrian Wilson would be able to get more than what he got. Wilson seven tackles two sacks and a forced fumble in this game. Second and one. Donovan's been doing a lot of smiling. A lot more in this half. Handoff is to Westbrook. Picks up three and a first down. Play action. McNabb airing it out for Deshaun Jackson. Behind the defense, a juggle and a touchdown. And now because of the missed extra point the Eagles are up by one and they'll keep the offense on the field and go for two here. They drafted Deshaun Jackson to hit the home run on the outside and he just went deep on Dominique Rogers Cromartie. Well Donovan wanted to go to Kevin Curtis initially and then he sees that he's got Jackson one on one on Cromartie and he's got a step on him and he just throws a great ball. And on that one he led Jackson to the middle of the field away from the sidelines to give Jackson a chance to run away from Cromartie and come up with the big play. This will be the first two point attempt by the Eagles all season. Fake by McNabb, buying some time. Penalty flag, pass incomplete. Holding number 72, offense. Penalty has declined. Deshaun Jackson hung with that play, hung with that catch. 62 yards for the Eagles' first lead of this game. McNabb, 13 of 19 in this second half. 233 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. Preston from inside the end zone. Out to the 28. And back to the play by Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, if this was a foot race, Cromarty probably wins it, but watch the move that he makes. Jackson does in order to give himself a step. Now Cromarty makes up ground right there, but just a perfectly thrown ball by Donovan McNabb and, and really great concentration. You know you got a hand coming across the ball as Jackson goes to make the catch and he sticks with it and brings it in. Again 19 points scored unanswered points scored by the Eagles in the last eight minutes 23 seconds here is Edger and James and now the Eagles would like to see their defense take over this game the way they've taken over the first two postseason games here in January. Bunkley made that play. Second half possessions have basically hardly had the ball at all. Well I think the worst part of that as you see I mean they've only had 12 plays coming into this possession here. And so not only have they not moved the ball but most importantly they haven't taken time off the clock. Ten minutes to go. Kurt Warner facing second and 11. Looking left all the way. Now over the middle hits Fitzgerald. First down Cardinals. First catch of the second half for Larry Fitzgerald. You, know, you talk about taking time off the clock in this second half and, and the job that Philadelphia has done defensively. Well now all that's out the window. You know now it's about doing what you can down one point to put your team in a position to win a football game. Well, a lot has changed from when they went in at half. Warner throws and completes to the tight end Leonard Pope. 
Cardinals lost Steven Spock to a torn ACL and MCL. And last week's win over Carolina, he was an important part of not just the passing game for Warner, but the running game blocking. And a juggled catch looked like Pope corralled it in time. And he picked up nine. Well, Pope doesn't get a lot of opportunities to make <laughs> to make catches. I mean, the guy who who only had nine receptions during the regular season. I'm sure he was as surprised as anybody that it was coming in his direction. Here is James ran into a wall and all he can do is get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and short. And this is the this has been a problem for Arizona. I mean you would think at third and short third and one in particular that it would be an easy down and yet Arizona is the third worst in the National Football League at converting third and one just over 50 percent. So about third and a little over a yard. Hightower the rookie the tailback depends on the spot Chris Gokong made the tackle. Our line is unofficial. Hightower thinks he got it. We may be headed for a measurement. We are. Well, the Eagles do a good job of trying to stretch it out. And then, you know, based on where the line is, you know, as you said, I mean, that's not an official, an official line, but yet it's pretty close to being accurate. You'd think that any is. He's short. Well, you want to be a head coach in the NFL, Ken Wisenhunt. What's the call? You're just on Philadelphia's side of the 50. The Eagles have all the momentum. It's fourth and inches, and it looks like they'll go for it. Well, I don't blame them. I mean, really, you think about the year that Arizona has had, and you look at, well, we got six inches, five inches, whatever it is, in order to pick up a first down. I don't blame Ken Wisenhunt for going for it here. Eagles defense had two big fourth down stops last week at Giant Stadium. With Patterson and Bunkley anchoring that defensive front for the Eagles. It's Hightower off the right side. Picks it up. Big first down Arizona. And an exhale from Ken Wisenhunt. Well, you know, you think back to last week's game with the New York Giants and the Eagles, and the, the Giants going for it there late on fourth and short a couple of times inside, not being able to get any movement. This time the Cardinals, they try to go wide. And it looked like Quentin Michael, had he have been able to get off a block, might have been able to make a play before Hightower was able to pick up the first down. What a good block by the fullback Terrell Smith. Allowed Hightower to pick it up. First down at the Eagle 43. Back to Edger and James. Second down and eight. Majority of those yards picked up in the first half in what was a near perfect half put together by the Cardinals. The Eagles have answered here in the second half. Second and eight. Quick throw. Fitzgerald. To the 23. Well, the Eagles, they brought a lot of people to Kirk's backside. But Todd Haley has a good call. You're going to see the people come here, and he's going to the slant there to Fitzgerald one on one on Asante Samuel. And we talked about it the Eagles being able to go down and make a game out of this and take the lead. How was Arizona going to respond once the pressure was put squarely back on their shoulders? Tell you what, they've responded well on this drive. Well within field goal range for Rackers as Edger and James takes it to the 21. Team Jordan on that last tackle. And Anquan Bolden and Todd Haley get into it on the sideline. Let me, let me tell you, Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, he's not a guy who's going to take to being yelled at very well <laughs> as you saw he's trying to call a game right now last thing he needs is a player 
distracting him. Bolden with four catches, 34 yards. On second down, that pass caught by Fitzgerald. Still won't go down and fights his way just short of a first down. You know, they weren't able to get the ball into Larry's hands you know, early in this second half, and, and you see good things happen when you get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. And this is a good example of the kind of strength that he has. Look at the catch, first of all. But now he's out of position with Asante Samuel on his back, and yet he's still able to fight through two guys and pick up some pretty good yards after the catch. And he has set a postseason record, breaking a record held by Jerry Rice back in 1988 with the 49ers. Here is Hightower. First and goal at the nine. What an answer by Arizona. Yeah, I'll tell you, Arizona has really shown me something on this drive. Watch Tim Hightower, the collision that he has as he finishes off this run. Brian Dawkins comes in, Hightower sees him. It's just a matter of who can get lower. I mean, that's a major collision right there and a good job of finishing off a run by Tim Hightower. The 12th play of this drive will be first and goal from the nine. They stay on the ground with Edger and James, and he's wrapped up by Trevor Laws. Second round pick out of Notre Dame makes a play, no game. In case you're wondering, the Eagles have two timeouts. Arizona has all three. Under three and a half to play. There's Fitzgerald lined up across from Sheldon Brown. Handoff is to Hightower. We'll see if the Eagles spend a timeout. They do. Arizona down by one. Set up a screen for Hightower. Has blocking. Has the touchdown. And now Arizona will go for two to try to make it a seven point game. They've not started the play clock. Arizona. One for six on two point tries during the regular season. This is their first of the postseason. Well, they better put two guys on Fitzgerald. Across from Asante Samuel. Warner throws and converts. Ben Patrick. A 14 play drive put together by Kurt Warner covering 72 yards. Hightower bangs it in. Arizona up by seven. And Philadelphia will start at their own 20 back to the touchdown. I tell you what you're going to see Philadelphia only rushes those four guys and you're going to see Wells. Deuce Latouille. And send line the blocks that are made right there are outstanding. And then Hightower finishes it off. And I think Arizona was anticipating that the Eagles would bring blitz. They did not. But it was just excellent. Excellent execution. Now here's the two two point play. To Ben Patrick. And the tight ends you know so seldomly used in the passing game. But yet we saw Pope come up with a big catch on that drive and then of course Patrick for the two point play Warner with four touchdown passes in this game and 
McNabb with all day back there. Throws through the hands of Westbrook. What a second half it has been for the Eagles. And they needed to continue. Last three possessions. Three quick strikes. And clearly there's there's plenty of time with two minutes and 46 seconds. However, Philadelphia left with just one timeout. Second and ten. McNabb to the sideline for Jackson. And the rookie hangs on. Good for nine. Out of bounds with 241 left, shoved out by Dominique Rogers Cromartie. Deshaun Jackson being aware of where the sidelines was and getting his feet down. Talked about a guy who's had one heck of a rookie season. Oh. Third down and one. Blitz. McNabb throws and there's Selleck and Eagles record. He has 10 catches in this game. First down, a gain of five. And John Runyon recognizing Antrell Roll coming off the edge on the blitz. He sees it late, but he's able to get a good block on him. And John Runyon, who's been playing throughout this entire season with a severely injured knee. McNabb throws high. What a catch by Westbrook. What a play by the Eagles with 209 left in the fourth quarter out of bounds is Westbrook with a 19 yard catch and run. Well you called it Joe They're really a great catch here by by Brian Westbrook because of the defensive line McNabb had to release it a little bit high Westbrook brings it in and then just a good job being aware of the situation getting as much as he can and getting out of bounds when Kurt Warner and Donovan McNabb squared off in the 2001 NFC championship game. Rams won the game 29 24 McNabb needed 55 yards over the last 220 to win the ball game and he was picked off on a fourth down trying to get it downfield and tie the game as baskets slipped covered by Roderick Hood. Deafening noise. When the Eagles are at the line and then everybody in this stadium holding their breath after every play. A blitz. Eagles pick it up. Over the middle, too high, and through the hands of Deshaun Jackson, who was open. Well, that was another opportunity. He had Deshaun Jackson for a relatively easy completion. You're going to see him in this offensive line, and everybody doing a great job of, of picking it up. You know, look at the pocket right there against pressure, and the ball gets away from Donovan, but he also had Kevin Curtis in behind that. Philadelphia six for seven on third downs in this half. Third and ten. A blitz. McNabb throws behind basket. It's fourth down. He had basket open and threw behind him. You think there's ever been a drive that put a guy into the Hall of Fame? Now all Kurt Warner can do is stand on the sideline and watch his defense try and hold on fourth and ten. Here come the Cardinals on a blitz. McNabb steps up, throws, dropped by Curtis. No flag, and the Cardinals take over.
Arizona brings the pressure and Donovan does a good job of hanging in there. Looked to me like pass interference could have certainly been called. Kevin Curtis trying to come out of the break. Roderick Hood sitting on the route. But even with that, a ball that Kevin had a chance to come in with. Warner stumbles again, gets it to Hightower. Cardinals just have to hang on to the ball. And Philadelphia will call their final timeout. Well, they said about this Arizona team coming into the postseason, Troy, well, they're not going to be able to stop the running game of the Atlanta Falcons with a hot shot young quarterback, Matt Ryan, and they did. And then they said, well, they're not going to go to Carolina and shut down that running game of the Panthers and win on the road and win in the Eastern time zone where they had been 0 5 this season. And they went and took apart the Carolina Panthers and now here against a red hot team with a rolling defense. Kurt Warner in this offense answered. They lead by seven. And they're a minute 43 away from the Super Bowl. Well you look at what they did the last two weeks as you said. Beating Atlanta going on the road beating Carolina nobody really gave them much of a chance of doing that in either one of those games. But are we really surprised by what we've watched here today. No timeouts left for Philadelphia as Hightower just keeps chugging. Clock continues to wind. And we may have a measurement. Depends on the spot as to whether it's a first down. It looks to be a little short. Let's go back to that play by Roderick Hood on Kevin Curtis. Well this one's going to be talked about for a while. It just looked like right there that Rod Hood as he's slipping that he's grabbing Kevin Curtis as he's trying to come out of the break. It's a little bit better look. He goes down low on him. It's a hard call for an official to make with the game on the line to have a drive continued because of a because of a penalty. But it looked to me like there definitely was contact. But as I said, even with that, Kevin Curtis had a chance to make that catch. And now the Cardinals will let the clock wind down and take a timeout before the play clock expires. With 59 seconds left. There was talk earlier in the year with the way this Arizona team was playing and in particular Kurt Warner was playing about a possible MVP award which would have been his third tapered off at the end Peyton Manning won the award but here is Kurt Warner knocking on the door of his third Super Bowl he won it in the 99 season lost it in the 01 season and now trying to take this franchise in Arizona to their first Super Bowl in franchise history. Third and one. A slip by Hightower and he doesn't get it. Drop at the 45. First guy there was Stuart Bradley. Clock will continue to wind and right now there are 30 seconds left on the play clock. So the Eagles will get it back but with around 15 seconds or so left on the clock. Yeah that's the difference right now between the play clock and the game clock and so 15 seconds they'll call timeout and then with the punt and if there's a return I mean there's not going to be but one play left for Philadelphia. Arizona takes a timeout with 15 seconds left. You look at Bill Bidwell who took over the reins of this organization the Cardinals a charter member of the NFL back in 1920 Charlie Bidwell Bill's father buys the team in 1933 is in the Hall of Fame died in April of 47 never saw the championship now his son Bill Bidwell with his son Mike Bidwell team president about to head to Tampa. Barring the miraculous. Nine 
seconds remain. The ball is spotted at the seventh. Today's game being produced by Richie Zients, directed by Artie Kempner, technical producer Joe Stevens, technical director is Colby Bourgeois, audio mixer is Fred Aldis, associate directors are Greg Scopatoni, Derek Manning, and Liza Kuhn. Our editorial consultant Steve Horn, the broadcast associates Rich Gross, Bentley Elliott. The studio show is produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Highlights coordinator Janice Kazaza. Studio technical supervisor Jack Simmons. The remote field operations Jerry Steinberg and our senior producer Bill Brown, president. Executive producers Ed Gorin, David Hill. Last shot for the Eagles, nine seconds left. They throw underneath. Try to set up the laterals. This one is to Deshaun Jackson. It started in his hands. Game clock expires. Darnell Dockett will start the celebration.